Evan Gershkovich, Paul Whelan, and Alsu Kermasheva, Americans recently freed in a prisoner swap with Russia, haven't even been on U.S. soil for a week, but they may soon discover, if they haven't already, what other Americans once wrongfully detained abroad have sounded the alarm on. A number of things in their lives have built up in their absence, including automatic IRS penalties. Listen to what journalist Jason Rezaian, who was held captive in Iran for more than a year and was released in 2016, told me Friday about this issue. In the end, I had to pay about $6,000 in fines and penalties because I had been uh, hostage and, and, and taken off the grid for a year and a half. So when I've talked to government officials about that, whether people in Treasury, in the executive branch at the State Department, or now in Congress, everybody is in agreement that we need to take care of this. We need yeah. to fix this. In May, a bipartisan bill introduced by Senators Chris Coons and Mike Rounds passed the upper chamber. It would amend the IRS code to postpone tax deadlines for U.S. nationals unlawfully or wrongfully detained abroad. The bill still needs to be taken up by the House. Joining me now is Diane Foley, the president and founder of the Foley Foundation. She's also the co-author of the book American Mother, which tells the story of her journey after her son James was kidnapped and killed by ISIS in 2014. Diane, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you, Lizzie. Your organization advocates for the freedom of innocent U.S. nationals held captive abroad and promotes journalist safety. Is this a common issue you've heard of for returning Americans? Uh, the, uh, the tax issue, definitely. Um, it's um, one of many. We, we do this uh, research every year. This is our sixth report, talking with, with returned hostages like Jason Rezaian. And Evan and Alsu and Paul will um, encounter similar issues. I mean, it's ridiculous. And that happens, too, with credit card payments or phone bills or so many things that um, occur when someone is gone and the person is not able to pay. But this IRS is particularly... Um, problematic. But I, I, I really think, thanks to the leadership of Senator Kuhn's office and others, his wonderful staff, it's a cur currently in appropriations. There's been much progress in the last 10 years, really a lot of progress. When Jim was taken in 2012 and killed in 2024, there was no one in our government accountable for his return. So um, both the Biden and Trump administration have um, promoted the return of innocent Americans like Evan Gershkovit, um, uh, Alsu um, Kermasheva, and Paul Whelan, um, certainly Vladimir. Um, also, you know, all of these good people have not done anything wrong, but they were targeted simply because they have blue passports and are U.S. nationals. And the IRS did send us a statement. I'm going to read part. They say they can't comment due to privacy laws on anyone's particular situation. They say they're, quote, committed to working with any individual who's been held hostage or unlawfully detained to resolve any tax issues that may arise from these heart-wrenching and unconscionable situations. They go on to say they're prepared to work with Congress to provide relief. Why is this an issue that requires legislation? Well, laws are like that. Um, they're, you know, they're supposed to be go across the board for everyone. Um, and this is why we have to work as nonprofits and civil society. We need to um, ask for amendments um, when they overlook populations like people who are held hostage, for example, um, you know, that, that, and are totally unable to um, certainly not to pay a bill. They can't even get out of where they are. So but these are things that happen and that have to be legislated. And that is why we do the research every year, because so often um, uh, Senators in Congress and doing um, legislation would have would not, can't think of every right um, possible. And that said, and so what we, other what, what other Diane under the radar issues do you consistently see that you think needs to be addressed for Americans returning home? Well, one of them certainly is um, you know the holistic health and emotional needs of being held hostage for years. You know, some people in solitary confinement, some people in very dismal um, situations. And many have been starved or beaten. I mean, you know, some of them are truly horrific. So um, 
at least now, thanks to uh, Hostage US, which we helped found after Jim was killed, this sister organization helps with returning um, US nationals and um, hostages have the option of going to um, uh, Fort Sam Houston um, to for a medical evaluation. But it's the ongoing mental and physical needs that often people may not any longer have insurance for or access um, to those kinds of um, very essential needs for them to return um, to work and such. So um, we have um, ongoing requests for tweaking legislation and more support for folks when they they come home. Diane Foley, um, that's why we are yeah. we are grateful to you, your organization. I know that this was highlighted in your report, as you mentioned, this issue you were highlighting it before uh, others were as part of this news. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you for your interest. It's so important for them. Appreciate you.